So I came out here because I want to teach you about lichens. Um, but it's hot out and I'm pretty sure you can hear the construction nearby. And I also got, I used up a lot of my enthusiasm because number one, I saw a bunch of lizards, which I don't normally see, but for some reason there's a whole bunch of lizards out right now. And number two, I saw a red fox, which is one of my favorite animals, and I wanted to find it, but I couldn't because it was sneaky. But the reason that I wanted to come out here today was because I want to do a series of laid back videos about lichens. I think that it's great when people can go out for a hike and have a, a understanding of what they're seeing while they're hiking. Um, and I think generally people do not have a very good understanding of lichens because how could you? They're not like mushrooms where you can collect them and eat them and people are all about, you know, harvesting mushrooms or they're not like wildflowers where people can just go out and enjoy them and you don't really need to know a lot about them to be able to enjoy them. And I want to start a series of videos about lichens and, but in a really like casual context, I watched some of my older videos that I made a few years ago and I didn't like how scripted they were, but we'll see how that works. Um, we'll see how clear I can be with my speaking if I don't script. So I think that the thing that makes lichens a little bit less accessible to people compared to flowers and mushrooms is that it's easy to understand what a flower or a mushroom is. A flower is the reproductive part of a plant and a mushroom is the reproductive part of a fungus. They're just a single unit. And what makes lichens a little bit um, harder to wrap your mind around is that it is a ecosystem of species that are coming together to form something that really just looks like one species to the naked eye. But if you go deeper, it's so much more complicated than that and um, so much less straightforward. Until like the late 1800s, I think, scientists thought that a lichen was a fungus. And then they eventually uncovered, oh, no, it's a symbiosis between two different species, a fungus and an algae, and sometimes the cyanobacteria, but for the sake of simplicity and because it's generally associated with algae, I'm just going to stick with algae. So then science was like, oh, okay, it's a symbiosis between a fungus and an algae. But now that we are able to um, do sequencing, sequencing the DNA, metagenomic sequencing, which is giving you the ability to sequence everything that's inside of it, every organism that can be found inside of it, is revealing that it's a lot more complicated than just a fung fungus and an algae. We were kind of limited in science um, for a long time because normally when you want to figure out what's there, you separate it out and you get petri dishes and you culture every organism that's found there. But lichens really tend to resist experiments. You know, you can kind of pull out these different organisms, but what we've always had trouble with is putting it back together, putting these different components back together and creating a lichen based on the different organisms that we have. And so the cool thing about sequencing is that it's given us this window into um, what the lichen is made up of and it turns out it's a lot more complicated than we thought and I think that that's one of the reasons why we've had difficulty recreating it in the lab because we don't really know what is going into the lichen. So there's always at least one fungus and that fungus is what that lichen species is named after, is the fungus. And evolutionarily, when we're recreating the evolutionary tree of a lichen species, we're looking at that main fungus inside of it. But then from there, you can have any number of any other organisms, different species of fungi and different species of algae. And those can change in a single species 
based on where it's growing. So there are studies that are saying that, that suggest that the elf, elf, with elevation, the same species can have different um, symbionts composing it. And so it can get really complicated really quickly. So I was intending on making this a very basic introductory video and it just occurred to me that I've been rambling on about um, these other, the complexities of lichens and how, how messy they are. And I think that's probably um, not something that you wanna hear if you're just getting started with something. So if that was too much for you to um, handle right now, just put it in the back of your mind and and you can come back to it later. So my camera died while I was outside talking about lichens. If there's anything that needs clarification, just leave a comment and I'll respond there or I'll put it in a future video and keep answering questions. I'm gonna to try to come out with new videos every other week. And so let me know if there's anything you wanna see and I hope this was informational for you and that you're as excited as I am to learn more about lichens. I'm gonna film a video here and you guys are just being cute and distracting. Can you quit it? Can you quit being adorable and moving around all over the place?